Hello and welcome to Hank Incident on Hank. My name is John Green. I'm the manager of the AFC Wimbledon Wimbley Womblies, who are in the Premier League playing Aston Villa Football Club, who today are wearing the bright green of cowards and goalkeepers, while we wear the blue of victors. And, um... Mm, I can't think of the right word. What's the opposite of a coward, Meredith? A hero. Victors and heroes. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. That's really, you know what? That's great assistant management. Really solid. Um, sometimes people say, like, well, I don't understand. Like, why do you need two people to run the team? Well, that's why. You just heard it right there. Um, I really, I, I, that was the word I was looking for, Meredith, for real. Um, yeah, so uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, how YouTubers are portrayed in the media. But first I want to talk about Callum Kennedy's hair. My God, it's so horrible. It's one of the worst things I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, John Green, Nate Bennett, is our captain today. Uh, he uh, is going to be leading a team that is currently in eighth place behind only Spurs, Newcastle, Liverpool, Manchester City, and Manchester United. Uh, Seb Brown's back in goal where he belongs. John Green and John Green up front. We've got Moes Vestergaard and Frankenstein, Dr. Not Monster, uh, out on the wings today, uh, anchoring our midfield. Hells, Pels, and Wes Moore. Uh, it's a strong side. We need to win games like this, but it's going to be a little bit difficult because Aston Villa, in their cowardliness, um, have chosen to be the exact same color as the grass. That will make it difficult for us to tell um, when, when it is a player that is an opponent and when it is just grass. Um, so today I want to talk about uh, how YouTubers are portrayed in the media. My brother wrote an amazing, amazing essay, Link in the Doobly-Doo, uh, about this. Um, a beautiful essay at, at Medium about, um, in the wake of his interview with the president, especially about the way that Glozell and uh, Bethany were um, portrayed by the media. And, and, and the... Um, the that there was this a bit of a talking point that uh, you know that uh, Barack Obama had made time for these YouTubers, but wouldn't make time for um, person X or person Y, and that that was ridiculous because these weren't serious people. These are people who uh, eat cereal out of a bathtub and talk about beauty and are just you know silliness. It's one of the things that's interesting to me about this is that Hank and I, I mean, well, I, I should say I should say me. I have uh, almost. I, I've largely escaped um, this um, because I think because I was a writer, my first book came out before um, our first YouTube videos. So like I was uh, in, the, in the minds of media people, I was a writer first. That said, even even now, I mean, definitely, you know, my, my, my books are are seen like to some extent correctly as being like a pr oh off the post and it was a beauty. That could have been the greatest goal in the history of the Wimbley Wombleys, but instead it's just another time that we hit the post. Um, you remember when Deeney, uh, oh God, ensured that we went up to the Premier League with that ridiculous outside-the-box bicycle kick, Meredith? It's one of the greatest moments of my life. I have two children. I love them both very much, and when they were born it was a very special moment. It was also a very, very, very special moment when Deeney... Uh, made that ridiculous bicycle kick from outside the box and ensured his future as a Wimbley Wombly. He was on the trading block before then. We were going to transfer him. I was done with that guy. And now I'm stuck with him for life, whether I like it or not. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I feel like, I mean, I, you know, maybe I get it a little bit, but, like, I feel like I'm mostly uh, sort of uh, exempted from, from the way that people talk about uh, YouTubers. They, look... We're asking people whose lives and careers are threatened by YouTubers to um, be cool and open-minded about YouTube. And that's asking a lot. <laughs> um, so I think maybe that's the first problem is that we've got to remember that, like, you know, the mainstream media, uh, you know, cable networks, um, newspaper reporters, like, the, these people's careers are threatened by, um, by the growth of the Internet and by, um, you know, in, instead of uh, institutions... Um, rising to prominence, um, it's you know it's it's individuals or small collectives, and and that's a big change. And um, there's there are things lost in that change. Like there are definitely things that are that are going to be worse about that change. There, there, there are also things that are going to be better. And I think um, I, you know I think in the end, like it's a, it's a trade that I I'm I'm in favor of, but I'm biased too. So uh, I get the um, I get that a little bit. Oh, it has to be, and it is. It's John Green. He's big, he's tough, he has a ginger puff. Other John Green, other John Green. My favorite thing was that celebration, Meredith. You see that? It's just two men who love each other. 
Ball John Green got on the back of his husband, other John Green, whispered into his ear, uh, that was a beautiful goal. I love you so much. Thank you for taking care of JJ, our beautiful son. It was great. It was an amazing, amazing moment. You know what, it, you know what his full name is? John John. Um, so, uh, yeah, I just, I, I, I understand it. But look, the, the mainstream media portrays YouTubers as idiots. That's basically, and as uh, they, don't, they don't really understand that YouTube is anything other than cat videos. Um, and, uh, and that's fine because that's kind of, in, in, in a way it's good because it's allowed us to like quietly ply our trade uh, without interference from, from big corporations. Like, uh, you know, the, the Wall Street Journal um, is a really good newspaper, but it's never succeeded at making good internet video. Um, and that's kind of nice for me because it's allowed me to do it instead. Um, oh my God, two goals in like two minutes. John Green, get on the, yes, kiss the ground. Kiss the ground that you love. Oh, he's saying, you know what he's saying right there. He's saying AFC Wimbledon, the real team, needs to be back in Wimbledon, back uh, at Plow Lane uh, so that they can kiss the ground and feel the connection uh, to their historic uh, land in the same way that the Wimbley Womblies get to. Um, right now, AFC Wimbledon um, is trying to uh, rebuild a stadium that is where the stadium that was um, Plow Lane, the stadium that was um, originally their stadium for 100 years before it was taken away from them, and then eventually the team was moved to uh, Milton Keynes. Um, they're trying to get that rebuilt, so hopefully that'll happen for them. Anyway, great first half from the Wimbley Wombleys, despite the fact that uh, Aston Villa is wearing the green of cowards and those who would like to disappear into the turf. Um, we are defeating them. So that's a good start. Um, I think, I, I guess, like, my, my concern in all of it is that, is that if you aren't on YouTube, right, like, you probably think that they're right, that Glozell is a creator who primarily eats cereal out of a bathtub instead of seeing it in its proper context, which is that, like, Glozell is a really interesting and complicated uh, creator who makes lots of different kinds of content. Um, and, like, that, that inability to, to see the... Uh, to, to allow for nuance or to allow for um, complexity is a lot of what I think is, 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 is hurting the... Um, the, the, is hurting media now. Like, there's a hunger for, for news uh, and for breaking news and for the new, new thing, but there's not, there doesn't seem to be much emphasis on context. So you don't know who Glozell Green is. I'm going to tell you in a sentence. Well, no, you're not. Like, you're not going to tell me in a sentence. You're going you're gonna to give me, uh, you know, one facet of the story in a sentence. So if you're going to take the time to talk about Glozell, like, talk about her. Don't make, um, you know, don't make these broad generalizations that don't hold up to scrutiny because then you end up just kind of embarrassing yourself with the people who do know what they're talking about, do know something about that world. And like, and it just, yeah, it's, it, it, it's a great, that's, that to me is where they really fall short. I mean, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, these people have 24 hours a day, seven days a week to talk about um, what matters, to talk about the news, to talk about what's happening in the world. And they do a really, I would argue, a pretty darn good job of reporting um, what's happening right now and uncovering things that are happening right now. But they, they, they do a terrible job at providing context. So you don't know the meaning of those things that are happening right now. Like, it's, you know, that you, they, they do a good job of saying the president spoke to YouTube stars, but they don't tell you what YouTube stars mean. And in many cases, they didn't tell you in that particular thing, they didn't tell you what the frickin' questions were about. Um, and what I found most interesting about that about, about that, um, that whole encounter between w with Hank and Bethany and, and Glozell and, and the president was that the questions were about Boko Haram and the questions were about um, our, our, our evolving relationship with, with Cuba and, um, and about drones and the way that uh, technologies, particularly military technologies, uh, tend to be tend to be um, overutilized uh, when they first emerge going back to, you know, the Gatling gun. And uh, those are really interesting questions that, that I, I'm not hearing in presidential press conferences with, with the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. And, like, instead of taking a cue from that, um, in many cases they, they, they tried to be dismissive of, um, 
of the people asking the questions. And that was, that was a little disappointing to me, I have to say, because, uh, yeah, because you can, you can do better. Like we know it's, we know people are interested in context. We know people are hungry. F I, I think people are hungrier for context than they are for news. You can get news from anywhere. Um, it's increasingly hard to find, find good ways to, to find out what the news means. Um, you know, like it, it's easy to find out that, that Boko Haram did, had a suicide bombing uh, yesterday, it's really, really hard to find out who Boko Haram are or where they operate or, uh, or, or what their level of influence is, um, whether they're, um, you know, uh, whether they enjoy popular support in uh, the communities where uh, they are, you know, they are um, essentially functioning as, as the government. Um, and th that's the really important question, right? I mean, those, those are the really, that's the stuff that you need to know to understand the world better. And I don't think they do a good job of that. So I think, uh, to me, the, the sort of, like, the way that the mainstream media portrays YouTubers in general is an outgrowth of that kind of inability to grapple with context. And it's not limited to YouTube, right? I mean, it's also, like, we always, w in the YA author world, like, we always feel that way when they write about young adult literature. And, and I, I'm, I'm sure that in the world of, like, you know, electric cars, people feel that way when they write about electric cars. Like, it's, I, I, I think it's a general problem of not being able um, to, 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 to be serious um, when it comes to, uh, you know, historical and political and economic context. Um, and, you know, we, we see that and it's, uh, but then there's also the element of, there's also the element of just generally dismissing youth culture, which goes back, I'm probably 250,000 years to the first human beings. Um, but, you know, and it is, there's no question that, like, because most viewers of uh, YouTube are under 30 uh, and most people in media are over 30, that they're like, well, these people must not know what they're talking about. You know who does know what he's talking about? Other John Green. Fantastic performance against the hidden green men of Aston Villa today. 2-0 to the good guys. Thank you for your support. What this is this season is turning out to be a okay so far. It looks like we're going to stay in the Premier League, and more than that, it looks like we can start to dream of of, of greater things. Um, and I'll tell you what, guys, the uh, the pleasure of football, whether you're talking about the pixelated kind or the other kind, is the pleasure of dreams. Thank you for watching. Best wishes.